So what is a stadium? Turn on your television and you are greeted by glorious engineering and technological marvels. Talismans of national pride. Temples of worship for multitudes of adoring fans to shower adulation upon the superhuman feats of the masters. They are the homes of the athletes and the fans, bearing flags and colors on structure and body. They are a representation of a people's pride. Pride for your team, pride for your town, pride for your country. Welcome to the National Stadium of Barbados. The crowds used to roar here. Few still do, though much of the pride has dispersed. The history was rich. On October 23rd, 1970, the Prince of Wales would open the gates to what would be at the time one of the premier sporting facilities in the region. Housing track and field, cycling, and football in one location. It was a place where the people of the Caribbean could gather in hopes of seeing the next flash of Caribbean athletic greatness. Where the nation's football heroes battled the likes of the United States for a chance to compete for the sport's greatest prize. And we're in 2003, a 16-year-old youth from Trelawney would set a world youth best in the 200 meters. The stands still bear the name of Barbados's athletic excellence. Names that have begun to fade from history. The number of meaningful regional meets has decreased, as has the sound of the cycles on the track. FIFA has condemned the conditions of the facility. They say it is inadequate for professional quality matches. Local players have their own view on the pitch. People call it a key and ground, you know. Um, as I said, when you go on the pitch, you see like 10 different kinds of grass. The nation's best athletes and sporting professionals agree that we have completely missed the entire concept of what the necessary infrastructure for athletic success is. It is said that we are underdeveloped and underprepared. In the case of football, they say we are 20 years behind. To put this in perspective, ask a group of local football players what they do for a living. I play for Youth Milan SC in Barbados. I also work at the Arawak Cement Plant as a physical analyst. I'm a maintenance supervisor. I'm a lifeguard by profession. I have carpenters, I have lifeguards, I have masons, I have um, boys that go to school. Would you expect to hear this from Messi or Ronaldo? The track has its own story. When it was laid in 1999, the angles and alignments were slightly off, creating problems for some athletes. As time increased, so did injuries to athletes. Gerard Mason is one of our brightest hopes. He has traveled as far as France to compete on behalf of the island. Their facilities were top notch. I mean, when you step on the track, it was like you were stop, uh, stepping on a cloud. Our track was 10 years old, so it was stepping on a rock. So it was just different. The stands, which were built as temporary fixtures for the independent celebration on November 30th, 1966, were recycled and used at the stadium in 1970 and are still in use today. One sometimes wonders if it is the wind that shakes their crumbling frames or the restless ghosts of our brave forefathers who sowed the seed from which our pride is sprung. The murals are faded, the steel is rotting, the shot put pit is overgrown and there are plastic bags in the barbed wire fence that forms the perimeter. The paint is chipped, the signs are crooked, the grass is overgrown. There is a barbed wire fence that forms the perimeter. The number of participants at the Olympic Games has decreased from the highest in 2000 at Sydney, when Obadeli Thompson won the island's first individual bronze, to the lowest at these 2012 London Games. It is possible to believe that the passion is left. Possible, not true. Well, I would say that a dream carries you as far as it can. So my dream to be a professional athlete is what is carrying me right now. And these athletes, because they have traveled to Korea, they have traveled to CSC, have made friends with these international athletes. When they see them competing because they're their Facebook friends, they're able to stay motivated in terms of what they do. And I heard some of the athletes say, well, I, I, I beat him at, at Korea. So I can get there. That is the motivation. This is where hope lies. These are the faces of the future medalists. 
Barbadian identity must be redefined. A national stadium does not create an Olympic gold medalist or a World Cup champion. It is something that should inspire dreams. It is the manifestation of a country's belief in its athletes. It plants the tiniest seeds of motivation in the minds of the youth, seeds that grow into the largest trees. Imagine the emotional impact and pride that comes from training with your countrymen and knowing that you can be the best in the world. The government of Barbados has begun works on the stadium as of this year, and while the main beneficiary will be the track, it is clear that many parts of the crumbling structure will require the same level of care and attention. Officials say the funds simply aren't there. The island doesn't need the most technologically advanced stadium. We do not need the Allianz Arena or Cowboy Stadium. It must be done within our means. It must reflect us, our culture, our style, our place. It is what we do with what we have that will determine our success. Peering into the crystal ball, we see the future. The coaches, the councils, the associations and the government come together for a national consultation on sports. Everyone gets on the same page. The University of the West Indies and the National Sports Council come together to create a high-performance centre for athletes. Visitors from all ends of the region return for competition. Cold climate athletes choose Barbados as their winter base. Our athletes benefit from this exposure. Sports are no longer seen as a pastime. Christian Taylor jumps for Barbados in 2016. I share this moment with my family, my family from the States, my family from Barbados. We qualify for the World Cup. The imagery is realized, the potential is maximized. But what do we know? We're documentary filmmakers. What we do know is that we're a stronger nation than we realize and a greater one than we believe ourselves to be. I want to see myself as an Olympic gold medalist a world champion and also the Caribbean games are coming up. I would like to see myself as a Caribbean champion, a CAC champion, a Commonwealth champion. So basically I want to see myself as the greatest of all time in track and field. If this is the beginning of things to come, then we're off to a great start.